This record of mistreatment and neglect contrasts bizarrely with the love and attention devoted to dogs at the great festival of British canine fancy, Crufts Dog Show. This is the well-heeled end of the dog market, where every accoutrement of canine fashion is on display, along with hundreds of products for better doggy health. But even at Crufts, we can find evidence of another kind of mistreatment. The health problems we see here are not spread from dogs to humans, but the other way round. But dog breeding has now become so competitive in its pursuit of prize-winning body shapes that many of its products are a genetic disaster, condemned to be victims of inbred malformation. There's one particular breed which has only recently been introduced into this country, uh, the Shah Pai, which has severe problems because of the folding of the skin around its eyes and a great many of them require eyelid surgery as a result of that. Breeding dogs along that basis is really pretty crazy. And for instance, just lately in the Times, there have been advertisements for sharp eye puppies, advertising them as well wrinkled, which is hardly a criterion on which to judge a sound, healthy dog. Could you give me an example of dogs that are particularly vulnerable? I think amongst the worst are Pekingeses, which are essentially respiratory cripples all their lives. Um, basset hounds because of the shortness of their legs. Uh, Smooth-haired miniature dachshunds are very vulnerable because of their long backs. Um, the other short-nosed breeds all have respiratory problems and some of the very large-headed breeds such as the bulldog can have very severe problems and the number of them that require caesarean sections to be born at all is very high indeed. With these English sheepdogs, um, why do they have um, hair, so much hair on their faces? Well, it goes back to the days when they were supposed to be a real farm working dog and the hair was supposed to protect them from the weather, it's the wind, the rain. And why, why, is it, is it, uh, why is it as long as it is now? Well, it's only long now because it's been bred that way for the show purposes. Do you ever try and dissuade people from um, these, this kind of pedigree breeding? We always try, particularly in my own practice, we always try to emphasise that soundness and temperament should come first and that minor breed points aren't worth winning shows for. It's a dog's temperament, not its looks, which make it a safe and sociable pet. But looks come higher than temperament in the breeder's list of priorities. If you had to put one characteristic first out of everything, which would you choose? Body. Body shape? Body shape, mm -hmm. yes. These are Rottweilers, which are very powerful, heavily built sort of dogs. And it's the type of breed in which temperament is of supreme importance. Obviously, with a dog of this sort of size, it's very important that they should be bred for docility and gentleness as fam if they're going to be kept as family pets. If you select for the more vigorous, outgoing, pushy sort of dog, um, which might be in fashion within that particular breed, those are the sorts of progeny that will go out into the pet market eventually and will present dominance problems towards their owners, towards other dogs, and so on. Um, so there's that direct influence. Uh, the tolerance within a breed, within a show ring, of, say, a dog that is biting the judge, rotten towards other dogs, or with a history at home of being a biter, is absolutely intolerable. I mean, it should be stopped. Uh, obviously, a dog that sits on the show bench and bites the judge isn't going to win very many prizes, but they're not tested thoroughly for temperament and although the more responsible breeders are very aware of the problem and do make great efforts to avoid selling difficult or dangerous animals, uh, not nearly enough attention is paid to it at the lower end of the market, certainly. This weekend sees the 90th annual Crufts Dog Show with over 11,000 dogs competing. Uh, somewhere in the region of 160 different breeds. Now, to comply with the strict standards which are set by the Kennel Club who run Crufts, some of these dogs are said to suffer terribly from the features that are bred into them for the sole purpose of show. Now, we've got some dogs with us today on Splash Studios, along with our handlers. We also have with us Mr. Simon Wolfenson, who's not only a veterinary surgeon, but someone who's written about this subject on many occasions. Uh, Simon, first of all, what is the main problem? It's a question of avoiding the most exaggerated forms of some of the physical characteristics that we can see in front of us. On the whole, these dogs can't be said to be suffering. It's the worst examples that come under that category. 
In front of us here, for instance, we've got a, a Sha Pai, Chinese Sha Pai, which has, as you can see, very wrinkled skin around the eyes and around the face. When they're very small puppies, um, they have severe problems with their eyelids because of that, and a lot of them need surgery to correct the eyelid deformity. This one is now about 20 months and not too bad. She's got past that stage. Um, over on the right, we've got a, a bulldog. You've only got to listen to his breathing to hear some of the problem. He's got a very short nose, very stocky legs, very large head. Some of these things are under review, as it were, but uh, he still has obvious problems there. And we've also got a picture of the bulldog as it was in the 19th century. Mm -hmm. um, How does it differ today, is it, from the, the 19th century? The 19th century version had a much smaller head, much more athletic dog generally, um, much less stocky, uh, much more of a working animal. This poor old fellow is finding it warm under these sort of lights and uh, is obviously has a rather weak respiratory system. Now, can, can this breeding be reversed in, in a way to, to make these dogs feel better and so they, they don't suffer so much? Oh, yes. Like our bulldog here. Um, it's simply a question of avoiding breeding the most exaggerated types. Uh, this Basset Hatton, for instance, still has rather long ears, even though they're not as long as they were maybe 10 years ago in the Basset breed. Um, his back is still too long. Uh, his legs are rather short. And in fact, uh, working basset hounds are being bred crossed with beagles now to try and correct that. Okay, uh, let me stop you there because we have from the Kennel Club uh, Bill Edmund who's joining us on Splash also at the end there. Uh, Bill, what is the Kennel Club's role? Well, the Kennel Club is the governing body of pedigree dogs and is responsible for all shows, licensing of shows, trials, working trials, field trials, all forms of competition involving pedigree dogs. And Crufts, in fact, is the Kennel Club's show. It also publishes breed standards for all these breeds. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are coming to the end at the moment of a review of the breed standards where we are removing clauses in those standards that require exaggeration. We recognize, and most of the breeders recognize, that you don't need exaggeration in any animal, in fact. So are the Kennel Club going to change their standards? We are changing the standards. We are coming to the end of a revision which began in about 1978. It's a very big revision. Uh, we're altering the editorial format of the breed standards and we're also taking out of them clauses which were deleterious to the breeds. The bulldog, the old bulldog standard which was written over a hundred years ago, and perhaps you may argue we should have revised it sooner, but we didn't, uh, called for the bulldog to have a big head. The bigger, the better. Now, even the breeders will acknowledge that that was not what they were trying to do. So we have removed that because it might encourage people to breed bigger and bigger and bigger headed bulldogs. Okay. Bill, let me hold you there. Simon, thank you very much. Thank you both and all the handlers for coming in.